Hey, Frank, thank you. Hello, everyone. As uh, Frank introduced me, uh, my name is Divya Aradhya, currently working in the cyber architecture space for City. Been in the industry for almost uh, 20 years now. For the first decade, it was mostly software engineering slowly meandered into cybersecurity, um, worked across the aisles with the, with the developers, and uh, here I am today. So at various points in my journey, I used to stop and reflect because most of the time in my career, I've been an individual contributor. And I thought, where does leadership really fit into this? Is leadership about managing people? Is it about saying I have X, Y, Z number of employees under me and now I'm a leader? And it led me to a very interesting journey. And I've shared this multiple times with various people I mentor. And it always uh, strikes to me that people uh, equate manager managership with leadership. And I said, there must be something beyond this. So let's take a look. And I'm so happy that all of you are here today to join me. So in the corporate world, in technology and in cybersecurity, leadership is and always has been around titles. The CISO, the director, the managing director, a manager, a head of, lead, president, SVP, AVP, what have you. And yet, if you just take a step back and look at leadership on the whole, especially in the rest of the world, if you go and take a look, you'll see that most of the influential leaders in the last century have been people who have not come from authority, who did not have these titles or roles. And I'm going to throw some uh, pictures here, and I'm sure you can identify them. We had Gandhi, we had MLK, we had Nelson Mandela, we had Mother Teresa, we had Rosa Parks, and all these people, rightly so, are leaders and yet neither one of them was a president, a prime minister, a senator. They did not come with titles which allowed people to say, hey, I have to listen to what this person is saying by virtue of who they are and their title. And yet they managed to influence and mobilize hundreds of thousands of people, entire nations even, and even go on to put ideas into people on the other side of the world. For instance, MLK Jr. was heavily influenced by Gandhi's way of leadership, and he has acknowledged that. So what then is leadership? Leadership in its most distilled form and uh, cutting out all the fluff is simply mobilizing people towards a shared goal. I did a quick look on the internet to try and find out what words do people associate with leaders and leadership. And uh, you see that in the word cloud in front of you. We have communication, confidence, clarity, strategy, competence, motivation, empathy, vision, loyalty, trust, ethical, proactive, team, influence, power, respect, conflict resolution, and direction. And strangely enough, if you think about this, none of them implicitly tell you that you need a title or a role for you to have or be any of these things. So what is the difference between formal leadership and leading without titles? There are three essential attributes. One is the all important one, power. Informal leadership, power comes with your title. You have the formal power to enforce decisions and to expect them to be adhered to. On the other side, without titles, there is power. However, it comes through the ability to influence and this influential power that you yield will be able to drive those very same decisions that could have come from formal leadership. The second one, communication. In a hierarchical formal leadership model, the communication is always top down. The people on the top tell and broadcast their decisions or the changes or whatever it is that they want to push down the organization. And everybody who reports them uh, get to know about it and go on, goes on to do whatever it is they have been told to. However, in leadership without titles, the communication is lateral. You're speaking to your peers, influencing them within your own team, in cross-functional teams. And very often, you can also build the message from bottom up and speak to those with real titles 
and still make the same changes. What is the key ingredient or the secret or the not so secret aspect of each of these models? In the traditional leadership model, it is the formal authority. There is an explicit contract between the person who is in that leadership role and the people who are the person subordinates and the formal authority is what drives it. In leadership without titles, it's a very elusive, intangible element and it's simply trust. Trust is what allows people to be influenced by you, even though you don't have a title to say, hey, this is what should be done. This is how it should be done. And the funny thing is many of the people who are in these formal leadership roles and titles realize that without the same attributes that the other side of the aisle has, the influential power, the lateral and the bottom up communication and trust, there is only one level of leadership they can have over their teams. Uh, if any of you are in Reddit, um, you can go look up a sub called uh, malicious compliance. So formal leaderships will definitely get compliance, but without the soft skills or the uh, part of trust and influence, um, you, they may not get the real buy-in and the real engagement from the people who are complying. So with that, let's uh, look at why should we lead? Um, uh, as we all know now, we always start with the why, right? So why should you lead? Uh, is this something you should be doing? Uh, what should be your motivations? What are the right motivations will get, which will get you to where you want to be? So I've just thrown together a simple flow chart. I will walk you through it and then I will revisit to it to tell you why this is the flow chart that is uh, probably most important in driving your decisions. So we start. Um, do you want to lead because you want power and control? If it's a yes, then I will have to ask you to think again. If it's a no, then is it for personal glory? Is it to say, hey, I am this person with amazing ideas. I'm the person who can do all this. Then I'm, I'm sorry, I will ask you to think again. It's not for personal glory. Is it for the greater good? Uh, no, it's not. Maybe you have some other agenda. I will ask you to think again. If it is for the greater good, you are ready. So what is this flow chart about? I'm not here to give you a lesson in ethics. This is not about ethics and whether you should be uh, an altruist trying to work for the greater good of everybody now. It's simply going back to that all important point of trust. If your primary motivation or if my primary motivation is the personal glory of Divya, I'm not sure many of my uh, peers are signing up to help that project. It is that shared goal that you need to have and share with everybody else. There needs to be something bigger than you that you're working towards that motivates you to lead, that, that, that puts that fire in your belly to say, hey, this is something that needs to be changed, even if you don't have the authority by title to do so. There's another very big reason why you need to look big beyond yourself when you try to lead something. A lot of people who are in the individual contributor space who don't think of themselves as real leaders and think that, you know, we'll put our heads down, get our work done. A lot of them are filled with uh, probably lack of confidence or they think it's not their space. They shouldn't overstep their role. Uh, let's just get our work done and go home. When you do find a cause that is bigger than yourself, um, you will be surprised to see how many of those self-inflicted restrictions just melt away because you feel that passion that this has to change, this process has to improve. And uh, suddenly you're able to talk in front of your managing directors. You're able to hold a um, step up in town halls. You're able to speak and influence because you're driven by something much, much bigger than yourself. I, I firmly believe that, you know, as much as we like to think that humans are selfish people, there is that spark in us that wants to connect and do something bigger. And when that spark is ignited in you and you speak about it to somebody else who has the same problems that you're facing and now you're coming up with a solution, it, it connects. And, and that is really the essence of how all those world leaders who went on to influence and mobilize thousands of people went about doing it. It wasn't their roles. It was uh, something very true inside them that ignited and connected with the other person. 
So yes, every time you think of, should I be leading this project? I would say, keep this in the back of your mind. If it's for any other reason under the, other than the greater good, and again, nothing to do with ethics, um, you won't get far. So just a word of warning there. So when should you lead and how do you lead and what are we looking at leading? All of us have challenges. I mean, cybersecurity is so many, so many uh, challenges every single day that we face. And believe it or not, each of them is an opportunity for you to pick up the reins and say, hey, I can do something about it. Just broken processes, go ahead and figure out how to improve them. Are they tedious manual processes? Um, maybe, you know, the whole notification and uh, escalation and communication piece. Is there someone actually writing those emails, following up, tracking and smacking? Is there a way to automate it end to end and free you for something that is more analytical, something where you are a real true brain power can be used? Are there knowledge gaps you see within your teams? Um, maybe go and train and develop and come up with something. And I have a real example here. Um, one of my colleagues uh, back at City, he had completed a CISSP and uh, he said, you know what, there's so many of the other folk who are looking at passing the CISSP too. So he went ahead and spun up a study group. And so many went ahead and uh, completed the CISSP through that study group. And I was one of them. Um, I'll take it a step further. So after CISSP was done, I said, hey, I should try for the season. And this time, um, while I was preparing the season for the season, I hadn't even passed it. I, I started a season study group. And uh, guess what? So many colleagues found it as a safe space to come there, ask questions, which um, they otherwise wouldn't have because you're so scared of thinking that, oh, am I supposed to know this? I don't know this. Is it okay for me to tell people I don't know this? Um, so yes, yeah, step up, train and develop your people, and you don't need a formal title for that. Blind spots. If you're a new organization, a young organization, maybe you work for a small organization, there are so many um, pieces of security which may not be there. And if you've identified something, for instance, your DevOps pipeline, maybe you don't have the security piece in there. Can you bring in new ideas? Can you help build this DevSecOps pipeline? Can you help the cybersecurity in your organization mature? Great opportunity. Broken communications. Uh, over time, if you're working with the same people, um, you're used to a certain way of working. And at some point, if they have, there has been friction, communication has broken down, nothing much gets done. And I think we've all been in situations like that. That is an opportunity for you to go ahead, repair, build this uh, relationship so that we can say we're all working for the same team, for the same company. Let's build something better. Silos. Um, I think uh, the classic silos in AppSec world is the developers just want to be left alone. Um, the security people keep going and poking holes in their uh, code and saying, no, you're not ready to release, fix this. Lots of resentment silos you don't understand our world why are you after us is security is the bane of our life go ahead and bridge and collaborate and start with lead with empathy so so many opportunities for you to step up and say hey i'm going to do something about this not just accept the status quo beyond the opportunities where you can actually create and do something just the way you conduct yourself in challenging um, situations and we have quite a few of those in our world lead by example how do you handle change if there is an organizational change you've been put in a new team or your project was done and now you've been just plucked and put in somewhere else your manager changed your colleagues changed. Uh, you've gone from being completely remote to now saying, hey, I need to be hybrid to, or I should be there full time. How do you handle change? Is it with a lot of resentment? Are you sticking your feet in the ground? Are you grumbling about it? Are you able to see why this is required and adapt? How do you handle being challenged in an open forum? This is always a, a tricky one. A, a lot of times when there are heated discussions on calls and uh, you are sticking to why something has to be done a certain way and um, you're so convinced this is the only way and this is the right way and you get openly challenged, your authority is challenged, your subject matter expertise on that is challenged, how do you handle it? Lead by example. 
how do you handle difficult questions? Are you able to have those difficult conversations, which uh, sometimes are essential for progress? Are you able to, uh, you know, face that and not hide behind or evade questions? How do you project, present yourself? How do you handle new projects you know nothing about? There is something brand new that's come in and it's on your lap. Uh, you're, you're great at what you do, but you know nothing of this. How do you approach it? Are you excited about it? Or do you wish it was going to somebody else? Are you okay with going and making new contacts? How do you approach it? And the same thing, working with new people and unknown teams. And how do you deliver on those short notice? I think we've all been there where something just has to have be done by tomorrow evening or um, and in your head you're thinking, why wasn't I told of this earlier? So how do you deliver under pressure? And if you do already have things on your plate, are you able to communicate? Are you able to prioritize? Are you able to finish the task and then go back and say in future so that we can avoid the situation, can something else be done about it? So yes, lead by example. It's not always leadership of uh, trying to fix a broken process, but people are watching and seeing how you handle yourself. And if you are inspiring enough in how you do handle these tough situations, you're already leading. So very early in my developer career, um, I was just out of college and I had this one colleague who was a few years um, uh, older than me, been in the company for uh, a while. And I was always fascinated at how calmly and coolly he would handle any situation. Uh, we put in a client meeting, the clients are asking a, a very difficult questions. He answers them. He, he, it, so many things were not in his control, but he was very cool and calm and was able to handle the situation. And I was always so inspired. And uh, for, to, for me, he was a leader because he was showing the way, leading by example. Uh, the face of our whole little organization was that um, bring it on, we can handle it and we'll give you something better back. So uh, don't underestimate the importance of how you react to difficult situations. As I said, one key aspect of uh, cybersecurity leadership is your influence. How do you go about doing that? Become a subject matter expert, share your knowledge, communicate clearly and concisely, adapt, be reliable, have a strong work ethic. There really is no substitute for that. Be approachable and be the first person to reach across the aisle. Of course, we have egos. Of course, we feel our point is the right way, but that can only lead to broken uh, communication and without repairing those relationships, you really won't be going anywhere. And how do we mobilize people? You really have to listen. You may have the greatest idea, but unless you, the, a person feels heard, they are not going to enroll in whatever your great idea is. Respect their point of view, even if you don't accept it. Collaborate, advocate for them when they're not in the room, advocate for the cause that they may have. Appreciate, show your gratitude, be open and wholehearted in your appreciation. Trust, we go back to that big word, um, build trust in them and also trust them when you delegate something that they'll get it done without micromanaging that. And finally, don't lose sight of your why. Few things to watch out for, and this can happen. Apathy and cynicism, when you take your amazing idea to your peers, you might just see that they're not interested. So work on your messaging. You get pushback. Have your page, have patience and know that not everything can be won. So pick your battles. The shiny object syndrome. So you have this great idea you're working on and suddenly you realize there's another high visibility projects are coming in. Maybe you should jump ship, um, avoid that and stay the course. Power trips. If you suddenly feel that you're the most important person in the room, go back to your why. <coughs> Burnout you need to delegate and collaborate. So if you want to know more about this, the two books I really like, one is Scott Adams, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. And the second one is Leading Without Authority. But honestly, the biggest source is for you to look inside. 
I firmly believe each of you is a leader, has something very unique that only you can bring to the table. And uh, I would like to leave you with a charge of saying, this is your space and this is your time in the sun. And you need to go forward and shine and be a leader. Even if you think you're not managing people, you don't have the title, don't limit yourself to that. You can find me on LinkedIn. That's the uh, link to that. And uh, probably the easiest way is to just search me by my name. There are quite a few people with the same first and last name, but I'll be the lady with the crazy wild hair. So go ahead and send me a request. And I hope even if one of you here leaves here thinking and knowing that you're a leader and there is something that you can change, um, I'd be happy that my work here is done. Thank you.